Hello, welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about length of swing and obviously club head speed and dispersion. Is it worth lengthening your swing for more club head speed at the cost of a bit more dispersion? Strangely enough, one of the most popular questions I get is length of backswing. How far should I be taking the club back? Should I be getting the club parallel to the ground at the top of the backswing? Well, the fact is the majority of us can't. Why? Because we're getting older and we're getting a bit stiffer and it's not physiologically possible within the boundaries of a normal golf swing. A normal golf swing, I'm basically saying I'm going to turn my hips as far as I can without straightening my legs and without lifting my heels off the ground. I'm going to turn my shoulders in plane with the club as far as I can without losing spine angle. And finally, I'm going to lift and hinge my arms as far as I can until the lead arm basically collides with my chin. My lead arm is, is also straight and that will basically give me the boundaries of my backswing. And when I get there, in the perfect world, I've reached my perfect backswing. So theoretically, if you've got 20 people there and they're all moving within their own physi physiological boundaries, we've got 20 different swing lengths. So it's not possible to actually say that where the club should be in your golf swing. What we can, however, say is that the length of backswing does have a massive effect on club head speed. The further you take the golf club back, the more run up you've got, the more run up you've got, the faster you'll get the golf club moving by the time it gets to the ball. What we do, however, see is that when you try to extend your backswing, depending on how you're doing it, you are very, very likely to actually cause more dispersion. You will be hitting it in different places on the club face and you will have the club face open and closed. You will change your path. You will do all kinds of strange things, which will mean you're missing fairways. So is it worth it at all? Well, I think sometimes it actually is and it depends very much obviously on the swing that you're making at the moment and how much uh, speed you're generating. But I think in some cases you can make minor tweak which will actually help you, but I would only recommend one. Now, if we go back to the different systems in your swing, you can basically see that there isn't an awful lot that I can change in my shoulder rotation or in my arms to actually get more distance without making major concessions. Changing my spine angle can't really be a good thing in any golf swing. Bending my lead arm excessively or letting go of the golf club, twisting my wrists in a different way to get more backswing is going to change face angles, paths, and it's going to be very difficult to coordinate. However, in the lower body, especially your feet, there's a very, very simple thing that you can do to extend your swing, and that is simply to allow your lead heel to come off the ground at the top of your backswing. What's actually happening there is quite simply, you are releasing the joint from the ground, which is allowing your lead hip to rotate a bit further. It will allow your trail hip to rotate back a little bit further, and that will allow the, the shoulders to rotate further and the arms to get further back. Will that necessarily bring you a load more club head speed? Well, it depends how far you do it. And obviously the further you do it, the higher you lift your heel, the more that you rotate, then the more difficult it will be to coordinate in the backswing. The tricky bit, however, for me is doing it without losing axis. That means I don't want you wandering out of the center and I don't want you standing up. You are simply allowing the heel to come off the ground in order to get more rotation. You are not trying to get more lateral movement. You are not trying to get more height. You are just trying to get more rotation. How much speed can you expect? Again, dependent, first of all, on the amount that you can actually coordinate 
and secondly on your ability to coordinate the way back to the ball. That is really a little bit a question of your talent and obviously how much practice you do at this. But just to give you a bit of an idea, I'm going to hit some shots now, starting with a normal shot. We'll see how much club head speed I generate normally, and then we'll actually try lifting the heel more and more and see how much that actually helps me. So the first one, just keep the feet on the ground. Wasn't actually a particularly good shot. Pulled it a little bit left. And We've hit 100 miles an hour, not quite, 98.9 miles an hour. I can usually get a bit more going than that. Yeah, that was better. 100.5 miles an hour, that will do us to start off with. So, how do we go about this? Well, it really is a bit of a kind of a trial and error thing. You've got to remember that when you do this, you might be changing other aspects of your delivery. You might change your angle of attack. You might change, obviously, that, then the dynamic loft. You might change your path. This is not something that you really want to do. However, I find that when I start to do this, I will start to hit up on the ball a little bit more. I will get a little bit higher launch and I will get a little bit lower spin. Usually because simply as I come back into the ball, I'm actually working a little bit more away from the ball unconsciously. It's not necessarily something I want to do, but it is, seems to be something that happens to my swing when I start messing around with this. But Let's give you an idea of what you can actually achieve. So this time, I'm just going to let it come off the ground a little bit, the lead heel. So I don't know if you would have even seen that. I felt it kind of come up. I've hit it slightly out of the toe, but it's more or less on the fairway, right hand side of the fairway, but it's definitely still there. And more or less the same speed, 100 miles an hour, not really changed. Let's give it a little bit more. So now I'm getting the feeling of it almost kind of getting back over my shoulder, almost could see the club head with my peripheral vision. It's unlikely that I will do that now when I actually hit the golf ball, although that will be my intention. Well, that's still down the middle, a little bit fady. Felt more or less out of the center of the club. I don't know how much further I took that one back. 102 miles an hour. So, wow, we got a mile and a half. Now, obviously, I could do this in increments for the next couple of hours and it will bore you to death. So, I'm going to go for a bit of a biggie. So, now I really want to see the golf club out of the corner of my eye. I want the feeling of not only the heel coming up, but the the lead knee bending a little bit, getting that kind of feeling of kind of a little bit of a kind of a reverse tilt. I wanted to kind of stay over the golf ball. Don't want to lose my position relative to the golf ball. Let's give it a go. So I've caught that, 103. Okay, it's more, but is it worth more? That is probably left side of fairway, semi-rough. Got a bit hooky, hit it a bit out of the toe. Oh, weather is not getting any better. That's the right side of the fairway. No, it isn't. That's semi-rough right. 104 miles an hour. Also been a change really in my angle of attack there. Definitely probably off it a little bit. Felt the club face opening up there. Again, this is something that my body tends to do when I give it a little bit more rotation, tend to back up a bit more out of it when I come into impact. This could be something totally different with yourself, and this is really why you've got to 
kind of get yourself into a situation where you can not only work back to where you started from, so it might be a good idea to just kind of get your handy out or your mobile out, get somebody to film you so that you actually see your length of swing normally, and then basically get yourself back there. But only changing one parameter in your swing, just this heel thing, should be able to get you back to kind of the starting point quite easily if you find that you can't control them. So, now we'll go for a real one. stayed over it but I really got it having a nice bottom heel there so it's actually going to be on the fairway it's actually 102 and a half so it wasn't actually any any faster and because of where I've hit it it's going to be shorter and I don't know if you can hear me at all because I've just lost my mic <laughs> oh. It's a great game, isn't it? So in post, I'll have to find out when you lost my, I lost my mic and whether you've been able to hear a word I've been saying. Um, <laughs> but obviously my new dynamic swing and my microphone don't really kind of get on. Left side of the fairway. 104 it's it there's more work there's more speed there there's no doubt about it but I really don't know where it's going I think maybe I could probably get used to it I could get it onto the fairway a bit more often if I was to practice it on a regular basis personally I think if I were to just be a little bit more active generally try and get myself my entire body just working a bit quicker get myself into a fitness studio um, I might actually be able to generate this kind of club head speed without any kind of physical swing changes um, and that might actually be the way that I would go rather than lifting my heel um, however I do this for a living at least kind of in a, some form um, and I need my body to be able to make golf swings on a on a daily basis for a hobby golfer who's getting down to the club a couple of times a week for me to say now you've got to go join a join a fitness club and and get your body work that might be okay for a young man who decides he wants to do it as a career but for the majority of you it's just going to be a step too far so lifting your heel might be the only way that you're going to be able to generate a little bit more of club club head speed um, without basically changing your swing entirely on a note of caution, get yourself maybe a launch monitor as well and really check that you're hitting it further. You might well be able to generate more club head speed, whether that is being transferred into ball speed and whether the ball speed helps at all because if it's disappearing into the rough or into the trees, that's no help whatsoever because you're gonna be taking more shots to get into the hole from there than you would do if you were 10 yards shorter on the fairway. We know though from strokes gained that distance is everything as far as strokes gained is concerned. The further you get down the fairway, the closer that your second shot is to the green, the less shots you're gonna take in a round of golf. And obviously if you're playing tournament golf on a regular basis over more than one round, then obviously that is most certainly gonna save you shots if you can get a few extra yards out of the driver. Hope you liked it. If you did, as ever, please hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done already. Um, I will be back very soon with the next video. Thanks again to all of my patrons. If you would like to support the channel, um, I shall leave a link below. Um, we couldn't get back as often without their support. And if you would like to support me, I'd be very grateful. Until then, bye-bye.